In a previous video, we had learned about algaes. Algaes are primarily differentiated based on their pigment composition. The pigments present in them can influence their photosynthetic capabilities. In this video, we will be focusing on these differences and learn what makes them unique. So we have the green algae, which is chlorophyceae, brown algae, phaophyceae, and red algae, rhodophyceae. Red is considered to be the oldest. We have fossil records of red algae, which dates back to 1.6 billion years ago, whereas green algae have uh, been dated to roughly around 1 billion years ago. Uh, brown algae evolved much later. It is believed that brown algae had uh, evolved from red algae. The green algae is aquatic as well as terrestrial. They can be found in seawater as well as in fresh water. And we have a wide variety of these organisms. Um, we have the unicellular um, chlamydomonas, the uh, volvox which lives in colonies and the spirogyra. Brown algae like to live in uh, the sea but in cold waters. They can occur as these uh, simple filamentous um, species or they could be profusely branched and really huge like kelp. They look almost like plants. So this is how a brown algae is. They are attached to the ocean floor by these hole fast which resembles a root. Um, the stem is in the form of a stipe. So it's more of a flexible uh, stem-like structure that they have. And these broad uh, leaves are called as the fronds. Red algae also live in the sea, but they prefer warm and deep waters. Uh, this is a common type of uh, red algae. Uh, they also have more complex body organization compared to the other two groups. Algae have very unique cell wall composition. For example, in green algae, the inner layer is made up of cellulose and outer layer is made up of pectin uh, in the cell wall. They also have these storage organelles which are called as pyrenoids. Pyrenoids. They are found within the chloroplast and um, in most of the species, they store either starch or protein. In some cases, they also store oil. The brown algal uh, cell wall has a cellulose, which is covered by a complex carbohydrate called as algin. They store complex carbohydrates like laminarin and mannitol in their cytoplasm. Red algae primarily has a cellulosic cell wall, which is incorporated with hydrocolloid substances like carrageen. They also store Floridian starch within their cytosol. Floridian starch has more resemblance to amylopectin and glycogen. Now comes the main aspect of differentiation. Green algae have chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotene and xanthophyll. So just because a certain color has been assigned to an algal group, it doesn't mean they just have one single um, pigment. Uh, corresponding to the name. So, although chlorophyll A and B are green, carotene is orange red in color and xanthophylls are usually orange yellow in color. They also have a wide variety of uh, shapes with respect to chloroplast. So, we have the cup shaped chloroplast, this is a discoid one, um, this is ribbon like, and these are spiral chloroplasts. Brown algae have chlorophyll A and C, carotenoids and a very specific type of xanthophyll called as fucoxanthin. It is olive green to brown color and is responsible for the uh, brown pigmentation. Red algae have uh, phycoerythrin, phycocyanin and chlorophyll A and D. You should know that red algae doesn't always appear red in color. So, red algal color is based upon the ratio of the uh, red pigment and the green pigment. 
and this ratio can change depending upon where the algae is present. So for example, let's say the algae is in deep waters where there is little to no sunlight. They develop, they develop more of red pigments which are able to absorb the light at short wavelengths and hence they appear red. If they are in deep waters, they have more phycoerythrin. Now, let's say the algae is in shallow waters. Okay, so they have more access to sunlight. So here, there is more amount of chlorophyll A and D. And therefore, they can appear bright green in color. This is such a cool feature for algae to develop in order to survive in two completely different habitats. We have already learned about the reproduction of algae. So you can pause here in order to revise it. All three groups show different types of reproduction like vegetative, asexual and sexual modes. In green algae, uh, we have already seen about fragmentation in spirogyra where the two fragments of spirogyra grows into two individual uh, algae. Um, similar fragmentation is seen in brown algae as well as in red algae. Um, asexual spores like zoo spores are also seen here. Uh, these are motile spores that can develop into individual algae. Uh, the zoo spores of brown algae are pear shaped with uh, two flagellae. So hence they are biflagellated. Um, they are little different in red algae because these are non-motile spores and they are called as aplanospores. Um, these aplanospores are found in the parent body and they burst out and then they develop into individual algae. Um, all three types of gametes are seen here in all the three groups as well. So we have the isogamous, anisogamous and the oogamous. So here we have a female uh, which is bigger and uh, non-motile, a male that is smaller and motile. Um, a similar oogamous gamete is seen in brown algae. So here we have a female who is larger and non-motile, a male who is smaller and motile, and a male has piriform shape with um, flagella that goes in the lateral direction. So this male gamete is different from that seen in green algae. Both isogamous and anisogamous are seen in uh, red algae as well. But here the oogamous are different because both male and female gametes are non-motile. But female gametes are always bigger than the male gametes. Now let's see some examples. Um, these are different varieties of green algae. We can say that they range from unicellular uh, types to these uh, organisms that look like small plants. Um, brown algae uh, usually look like huge plants. We can see that they have much broader leaf-like structures called fronds or they are even branched. Um, red algae, we have Gracilaria and Gelidium. So you are familiar with them because we learned that uh, we can extract hydrocolloids from them. We also have Porphyra, which is used as a food. Um, seaweed and we also have polysyphonia. Um, 